This editor's pick interview is with Carol Lazarus, Alexandre Vignot, and Philippe Tuchu from Neurospin and Université Paris Saclay. Their paper presents a novel technique for optimized case space sampling with variable density for accelerated imaging using compressed sensing. This technique is called sparkling, which is short for spreading projection algorithm for rapid case space sampling. Using in vivo measurements at 7 Tesla, they found that this algorithm was able to reduce MR scan times by up to a factor of 20 and yielded superior image quality when compared to conventional non-Cartesian sampling strategies. And so to start us off, I'll now hand it over to Carol, who will give us a brief overview of this work. Hi, my name is Carol Lazarus, and I'm going to give you an overview of our work which enables to design optimized sampling trajectories to accelerate MRI. Our optimization-based method, that we call sparkling, was born from a close collaboration between mathematicians, physicists, and engineers working in the French laboratories of Neurospin CEA and CNRS. Our work was also selected for the Rabi Award of the Young Investigator Award competition at the ISMRM 2019. Let me start with a brief introduction on sampling in MRI. As you probably know, samples are measured in the case peaks, and classically, if the sampling falls into a Cartesian grid, the image is reconstructed with a simple inverse Fourier transform. However, because of the Nyquist Shannon criterion, high resolution imaging often requires to measure a lot of samples, which leads to very long acquisition times. To speed up the acquisition, one strategy is to undersample the case space and then use compressed sensing theory to recover the image using nonlinear reconstructions. Because MR images are compressible, compressed sensing works well in MRI, but only if the sampling fulfills certain criteria. Indeed, it has been shown that the samples should be distributed along a variable density that is concentrated in the low frequencies of the case space. Another more general principle for optimal sampling is to have a locally uniform coverage, which allows to avoid gaps and clusters of samples that are typical of random sampling. These two criteria are however difficult to respect in MRI, because samples are measured along very regular curves constrained by gradient amplitude and slew rate. As a result, most of the applications of compressed sensing in 2D MRI have been constrained to the classical sampling patterns namely the radial, variable density Cartesian lines, or spiral. However, to respect the two criteria we just identified, we think that tweaking the existing sampling patterns may not take full advantage of the hardware capacities. This is why we introduced a completely new approach to the design of non-Cartesian case-based trajectories. Our method is named Sparkling, which stands for Spreading Projection Algorithm for Rapid Case-Based Sampling. Sparkling is an algorithm that seeks to minimize the distance between a target density pi and a case space trajectory k under some constraints qp. These constraints are typically the gradient hardware constraints, the echo time, but we also want to control the distance between consecutive samples on a shot. Finally, we use a high sampling rate to maximize sampling efficiency. Here is how sparkling works for a radial in-out initialization and a target variable density. You can see how the multiscale algorithm spreads the samples as much as allowed by the input gradient constraints while respecting the desired density. If you compare the initial point spread function to the output sparkling PSF, you can notice how the algorithm was able to smooth out the structured patterns and provide a well-defined central peak surrounded by a noise-like pattern. To illustrate the interest of our new method, we use the sparkling trajectories for T2 star weighted brain imaging. It is indeed a classical contrast at 7 Tesla because of the enhanced susceptibility effects offered at high field. Following standard T2 star weighting 3D protocols at 7 Tesla, we used a long TR of 550 milliseconds and a long readout of 30 milliseconds, which allowed to acquire 11 interleaf slices per TR. Finally, we used a standard parallel CS reconstruction in the wavelet domain to reconstruct our data. Here are some brain images prospectively acquired with the sparkling trajectories for a high in-plane resolution of 390 microns. As compared to the reference acquisition on the top that lasted almost 5 minutes, you can see that the image quality in the 18 second sparkling scan on the bottom was well maintained. A close-up shows that the majority of small vessels were also well preserved. 
Finally, we also compared the sparkling method with radial and variable density spiral trajectories for the same sequence parameters. Our results show that the sparkling sampling yields the best image quality and seems also more robust to B0 imperfections compared to the spiral scan that suffered from important artifacts. To summarize our work, we introduced a new optimization-based method that automatically generates non-Cartesian trajectories which fulfill identified criteria for optimal sampling. We successfully used them for high-resolution 2D MRI, and we actually now have the extended 3D sparkling version. Here is a list of all the publications involved with this work. Thank you very much for listening, and if you want to try the sparkling trajectories, don't hesitate to reach us. Were you, um, Kata, were you surprised by any of the results of the study? So we were, yeah, uh, we were uh, surprised first that uh, these complicated uh, erratic trajectories were actually performed correctly by our gradient system. So that was a very positive surprise. Uh, so uh, that was also one of the first things we checked uh, to, in this project. So, and yeah, so this was uh, the, yeah, the, the first result that uh, pushed us to continue in, in this direction. What about you, Philip or Alexan? Did you find anything surprising throughout the course? Um, actually, yeah, we, we met some difficulties and uh, what, uh, what uh, actually what really uh, surprising was the fidelity uh, uh, to which uh, the gradient system uh, reproduce uh, as a prescribed sampling trajectory that uh, uh, Carol uh, designed uh, uh, on her own uh, computer mm -hmm. uh, and once injected in a MR pulse design, uh, the sequence was able to uh, to play uh, faithfully uh, um, the gradient profile, and that was a really uh, positive outcome. And uh, uh, and also um, the the way uh, um, the approach could be extended uh, to uh, 3D imaging and potentially also to other application, other imaging contrast um, is a very good um, positive surprise, even though it's still in, uh, in ongoing uh, validation. Uh, on, on my side, I would say that, uh, of course, uh, the, the gradients, uh, for sure, that was a, a major surprise for me uh, that he could uh, follow uh, such uh, a crazy uh, pat uh, pattern of, um, of uh, uh, trajectory. Uh, but also, uh, we were thinking that maybe at some point we would have a PNS, so uh, peripheral ner nerves uh, stimulation. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, again, he, he has a very good uh, and satisfactory uh, um, um, surprise. He, he, it was quite uh, un. It wasn't that bad on this uh, on this area, and finally, when we started to compare uh, to spiral, uh, Carol w wanted that uh, very much uh, since the beginning. Uh, we we had this nice. Uh, view that uh, in fact uh, we were uh, probably less uh, sensitive to, to off resonance uh, because of uh, this uh, zigzag pattern so uh, well ma many uh, nice surprises in fact where do you see the biggest potential for impact uh, of applications of this technique so as we should as we as we have shown in the paper um so Basically, the sparkling algorithm is able to improve the initial sampling patterns when you have uh, time to do it, when you have time to uh, move around the initial support. So uh, the readout duration is, uh, is really important. So yeah, that has Alexandre Alexand said it um, more or less. When you have a super short readout uh, uh, and you initialize, initialize with a radio, of course, the algorithm won't have much freedom to, to, to move around and change and improve the support. But if you have longer readouts, and that can be, that is not, uh, I mean, very long readouts, we use very long readouts, but we, we can also, uh, from five milliseconds, you could already um, improve the support of the, of the sampling. 
so yeah, so every application that uh, enables to move around uh, and show support uh, would benefit from uh, this Python method. Yeah, in that sense, uh, I would say that the algorithm, the Python algorithm, is very generic because if your initial sampling pattern is already optimal, it won't change it. So it's like a local solution of our problem. So it like uh, incorporates uh, the, the, the existing trajectories actually. Philip, an example? Maybe so. The application uh, we have in mind for for the future and for the uh, high impact, especially in, in clinics, is uh, susceptibility uh, weighted imaging um, for in 3D imaging with a typical target of uh, uh, maybe uh, 600 microns uh, isotropic uh, in about one minute, which is uh, not doable right now in the in the clinical routine and uh, to for instance, to uh, investigate um, a disease impacting uh, the microvascular uh, mm -hmm. cerebral network, such as, for instance, the Cadazil disease. Uh, this is a, a neurogenetic uh, uh, pathology. Um, so we have this in mind for the uh, very uh, um, short time perspective, but um, uh, th there are also uh, um, potential um, application for uh, a high resolution fMRI, especially in 3D. But in that case, uh, we need to uh, to go to a single shot sparkling, which is a little bit more challenging than what uh, we have already implemented uh, in the context of that paper. Uh, I would uh, just add uh, uh, that. From my point of view, my feeling is that uh, anywhere you are doing radio, uh, we uh, might be able to do better um, in any case, but that's only a, a feeling. Uh, I was talking about long observation time before, but uh, we might be, for radio, uh, be able to do better anyway. And uh, therefore, uh, any uh, new strategy, very interesting strategy that has been done with a radial on abdominal, maybe for a dynamic imaging, uh, we, we, we might be uh, uh, successful. I mean, maybe uh, some uh, uh, multi quantitative acquisition where you have uh, uh, this kind of uh, sampling. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you have any comments or questions for the authors, please leave them in the YouTube comment section below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to click the subscribe button. See you next time.